Oh, I need my phone for this. I need my phone. Right. Oh, snug. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have another sit down video for you today. I am going to be trying to break things up a little bit um, with the vlogs just so I'm always coming across a little bit more interesting than I am. I wanted to do my best and worst purchases of 2019, kind of lump everything together and just really pick the best and the worst. I actually found finding the worst purchases harder and I think that that's going to shock you but I think when you hear me speak about the worst purchases of 2019 you will kind of understand. I've got a lot of really good purchases though so I'm really excited to tell you about those and I'm going to do my best not to waffle on so that this video is way longer than it needs to be. So, without further ado, let's get into the video and chat through the items that I really think were worth spending a little bit extra and a little bit, well, just spending money on in general. Remember, if you aren't subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back for more videos. And I promise I'm not all that bad. So if I'm in your subscription box and I'm just like, oh, hey, you know, you can come over and watch a little bit more. Other than that, let's get into the video. So first up, I'm gonna kind of work through things in no particular order and just if it's, if I pick it up and it's one of the bad ones, then it's a bad one. If I pick it up and it's a good one, it's a good one. We'll just kind of work through it, but I've got some things noted down because I can't show you everything if you know what I'm saying. First things first. This is the one that inspired this entire video. This is my iPad Pro 11 inch with keyboard and case. I kind of impulse purchased this. I was going in to get a new laptop and I chatted to the people from Apple about what the best option was to have something small that could fit into one of my handbags so that I could have my work with me whenever I'm inspired, whenever I feel like, you know, if I feel like writing a blog post or if I feel like working on something, I can just get out my iPad and do that. Well, no, just get out my laptop, really. But they said to me that basically what Apple is trying to do is to make everything possible from a laptop on your iPad. It's not there yet, so I don't feel comfortable like pushing videos live from this just yet. I might test one in the future and see if we're there yet. But once I push live from my phone, and wow, that was terrible. But I can write blog posts, I can write captions, I can do all my emails, I can get on top of everything using this little thin, lightweight thing that has its keyboard tucked in its case and it magnetically stays there and it's just perfect, it's all I need. One thing I would say, I'd love this to be a little bit more weighted so that when you're working from your lap or whether you're like on the sofa, lying down, which I do a lot of, it, it kind of needs to be a little bit more weighted on the keyboard, but then it's just gonna add to the weight of the overall item, so I kind of get it either way. But this has definitely been one of the best purchases I made. They are expensive, They're, this was about a grand, but I did get the extra storage so that I can keep pictures edit, do all of those things from my bad boy right here. Super useful and I think I'm also going to invest in one of the pens so that I can use it for like writing notes and things like that. I'm not sure how comfortable I'll be with that and one of the other items that I'm so happy with. Now I didn't purchase this, this was sent with some makeup or something but this is a Smithson or Smithson, how, how do you say it? Let me know in the comments because I initially, because of the why and I say things how they're spelt, I want to say Smithson. And is it Smithson? Is it neither of the two? Help a girl out in the comments. I've never had a Smithson or Smithson diary before and I was really on the hunt for something a bit smaller that again can fit into my handbags and I can take it with me for note taking, for day planning, all of those kinds of things. And when this arrived, it's so beautiful and so sort of well made. Like this clip keeping everything together is so handy. I wanna see if they have a special pen that kind of clips onto this and stays there. I'd love that because I do keep losing my pens. This is the other sort of partner in crime to this. I got myself a diary. And in this diary, it works really well for me because it has the day planning down here and then it has notes for the week there so I can like write down everything that I need to do on this page and I can check it off for the entire week. The other thing that I really love about this, this is honestly the bougiest diary I have ever, ever had. 
but it has my, sorry, I used it the other day when I had oil on my whole body and I've got some on the pages, but this is my year plan and I use this for my workouts. I got this idea from M. Sheldon. I saw it on her stories and basically she tracked all of her workouts for the entire year and I was just, I was like, that's such a good little motivator and I'm such a visual person that seeing my tasks written down makes my life so much more manageable and I've really got into every evening I write down my plan for the morning and then also what I have to do that day and I record my workouts. So every single day, I, I obviously I haven't recorded them for today because the day is not over yet, but I have a little sort of keyword thing. So S is for spinning, Y is for yoga, M is for meditation and PT is for personal trainer. Steve, I'ma call you. We need to hook back up and do some personal training. I'm back on it. But yeah, that's just for when I do stuff with him. And I just put the letter and I, I put down how long I worked out for. So on Thursday I did uh, spin and yoga and I did 45 minutes. The next day I did meditation and yoga and I did an hour and 45 minutes. Saturday, I took a day off. Sunday I did spin and two yoga classes for an hour and 15. And then Monday I did 20 minutes of spin. So I need to up my spinning, I think. I wanna do like 30 minutes a day, but it's good for me to track and see where I'm going. So this has been really, really useful to have as well. So those are two items that I'm so glad that I purchased last year. Well, obviously we've explained this, but two items that are really sort of making a good impact in my life and I'm glad that I purchased and spent that money on and spent money on good quality items as well. And they were like a little partner in crime. An item that I'm very sad that I purchased, especially because with all of the gadgets and everything that I bought with it, I spent nearly a thousand pounds. I purchased myself the Canon G7X Mark III, and this has to be such a fall from grace for Canon because I love Canon products. I am filming on a Canon 5D right now. I vlog from the Canon D7X Mark II. That camera was an absolute game changer for the industry and so I had such high hopes for this camera. And unfortunately, I, I think it's such a letdown. The autofocus on it is atrocious. It really, it doesn't, it's not fit for purpose. Not to mention that I also found that the actual picture itself was over sharpened and the last thing I want to be worrying about is looking horrendous when, I, I mean, I look horrendous most of the time when I'm filming, but I don't want to look more horrendous than I actually am, if you know what I mean. I work hard to try and make the best out of a bad situation here, and I really felt like it was over sharpened and the picture quality was just, it just wasn't great. I didn't like filming on it, and so it sat in my drawer as probably one of the biggest waste of monies because it really didn't do anything for me. I used it a few times, apologized to you guys, and went back to my old cameras that are falling apart. I've got three old Canon Mark IIs, and I had one of them restored by Canon, which was great, and that was a real help from them to do that. I just, I really thought that this was gonna have some cool technology that really upped the game for vlogging and made it easier, more streamlined, and it just didn't. So I was really let down, but as a, a big fan of Canon, like I have been a Canon girl since I started YouTube, I think, because I filmed all of my YouTube videos on Canons and it's, yeah, it's <sighs> such a letdown. But that was one of my biggest wastes of money in 2019. Next up, I wanted to do a fashion one. We should have cleaned these up a little bit. I'm gonna try not to hold the bottoms of them. Oh, everything's falling. One of my most favorite purchases in terms of fashion and accessories were these Jimmy Choo's. I don't even know what these are called, but Wow, have I worn these a lot since I got them and I've even got them in another colour. Oh, no. I've even bought them in black, although I don't think I'm gonna get as much wear out of the black as I do the nudes. I don't know why, I just think that these are beautiful and game-changing and I love them. And they're just such a gorgeous glittery touch. I've really got into sparkle recently. I don't know where that's come from, but they're comfortable, they're wearable, they're, in du they're durable because they're patent. I prefer not patent shoes, but sometimes, especially with nudes, you kind of have to just go with the patent because otherwise they will just get ruined. But such a gorgeous, glitzy and chic shoe that I am so happy that I purchased in 2019. So these will be linked down below. There is also new colorways that have just come out. I've seen green and bright fluorescent pink, which maybe isn't my color colorway, but um, I'll link both of those in the description box along with the black down below. Next up is, do you know what? 
two other items that I didn't like in uh, 2019 that I wasted my money on. And I just, I just wasted so much money on these. I just, ugh. yeah. So next up, and I feel like this is gonna be a controversial one because so many people look so great in these. And I bought three pairs of the Gucci loafers. I bought the slingbacks and the pink normal loafers and the black ones. And I don't think I've ever worn them out of my house. They are super comfortable to wear and like really lovely. And I think on the right person, they look amazing. But this is a prime example of trying to make something you that just isn't you. I wanted these to suit me but they made me feel so, I think, have I, talked, I think, think I've talked about these before, but they make me feel so short and dumpy and they look so great on other girls, but they just don't on me. And I can't believe that I bought three pairs of shoes and they just don't get the wear. They just don't. So these are probably gonna be items that are being sold in 2020 because they don't bring anything to my wardrobe. And I'm sure that there are some uber cool girls out there that can make these look absolutely amazing. So they're wasted in my wardrobe. In fact, these are so, these haven't been worn so much that there's a dead fly in here from the summer. How terrible. So yeah, I bought those in multiple colorways and styles and I'll link them all down below because you might like them, but yeah, these were not for me and I wasted a lot of money on these. Next up, we have the bag of 2019 and I think you'll be shocked by this one that I didn't pick the other one. But, this was the last bag I purchased, wasn't it? I did not buy a lot of handbags in 2019. Nowhere near as much as I bought in previous years. I like to think that I was being a lot more considered with my handbag purchases in 2019 and I hope to take that into 2020 with me as well not just buying loads and loads of trend bags I think I bought one trend bag in 2019 and this one really is the one that's showing me that I need to find that line between bags that are practical and bags that I like the size of and this was a really great purchase from the cruise collection. The day that it launched, I was there buying it and picking it up and it's still got the plastic on the, the metal. But this is the medium black champagne gold Lady Dior with this sort of textured leather. Leather is something that I know is a big sort of thing at the moment and I'm trying to be more conscious of it and not buy so much. I'm trying to buy the items that when they are in leather, they are items that are gonna stay in my wardrobe for a very long time, but it is something that I think about a lot. I do, because I love animals, and yet I wear leather, so it's the biggest sort of hypocrisy that I could say. And I feel very conflicted about it, and I think about it a lot, and so hopefully in 2020, I will be able to find more bags that maybe aren't leather. But this is the one that's been the most practical, the most used, and really sort of made me think about my handbag purchases a lot more, especially if I'm thinking about wearing something a lot. This gets my iPad in it, it gets my diary in it, it gets a battery pack, my phone, my makeup, some perfume. I can get everything in here. And I would really like to have a few more bags that are around this size. I also have the Astrological bag as well, which is more of my like summer version of this bag, but the medium is definitely the best size in terms of practicality from the Lady Dior and I'm super happy with this and it was expensive as Dior bags are but this this really has made it worthwhile spending that kind of money and I'm so so happy that I went for it and got something that's a black bag but a little bit different it's a little bit interesting I love it so definitely definitely love that for cost per wear practicality all of that jazz okay are you getting the hint I like the bag okay I like it we have a flop we have a flop of 2019. This Gucci blazer, still got the tags on it. I've not worn it. And this is because, it's not because I don't like the blazer, I do. I really love the shape of it. I love the, the classic monogram print from, from Gucci. I think it is timeless and it looks, because it, it, it's not black, it's got this warmth to it that I really like. But I am a classic kind of girl and I will always reach for the Bomarm blazers because they to me have this classic but 
really kind of girl boss vibe to them that make me feel totally different when I wear them to other blazers and that's why they still get so much wear in my wardrobe and I couldn't feature them in this video because I bought them so long ago that they are not from 2019 so that just shows you how good they are. This just doesn't have that same appeal and it's harder to style and as beautiful as it is and I love this baby blue lining that's such a gorgeous touch it's just not within my style I guess as much as I wanted it to be again with the Gucci sliders maybe Gucci is a brand that doesn't always fit my style and I need to be a little bit more careful with what I'm buying from there but Luckily I didn't take the tags off so I can resell this and hopefully someone someone else will love it more than I do if I can bring myself to sell it because it is gorgeous like oh you can just see the quality in how it's been made those seams are just amazing anyway sad times with the Gucci the Gucci blazer <laughs> the Gucci the Gucci blazer sad times next up is this the last item oh no I have some things to talk about that I can't show you Next up is my Burberry coat, my Burberry puffer jacket that was purchased towards the end of last year. This has been my most worn coat of the winter so far because it's a coat that looks great but is practical. And I think in my old age, practicality is starting to rear its head above the surface. I want to be warm, but I don't want to look, you know, like I just rolled out of bed in my pajamas. And this has a real sort of classic cut to it. It's got the double breasting, it's black, it's got the, the Burberry check, but really, you know, just a small amount of it that, that looks really nice on. And it cinches you in at the waist, so even though it's a puffer jacket, you don't feel like, you know, I know there's the trend for like really big coats, but that's obviously not a trend that I'm ever gonna get on board with because it just doesn't suit me. It's like a cool girl trend instead of a classic girl trend that I would say I am more of. But yeah, this was just such a great purchase and I'm over the moon with it. So it's always in the boot room cupboard and I grab it when we go for walks, when we go to the pub, when we're going anywhere that I might be cold, this is the coat that I reach for. I'm pretty sure it's sold out almost straight away after my video, but I'll see if I can find anything similar or if I can find it in stock elsewhere, because that's a good thing about Burberry is you can find it in a lot of high-end stores. So this was so good. So this is gonna be one that's kind of like lumped everything together. So obviously I did a lot of learning in 2019 about interiors and I have made some changes and I know that a lot of people were quite riled by that. For me, I was learning a new sort of skill and passion in front of people and I made a few mistakes and I changed a lot of things and I tried to put right things that I just needed to fully change and I've been on such a huge journey with it and I feel like I know so much more about my style and I'm a lot more confident. I find making decisions so much easier now and finding the right pieces and not impulse buying things now. I've learnt my rhythm and I feel like going into this year I've got a much more holistic view of the changes that I'm making, the rooms that I'm decorating because we have Aside from bathrooms, two rooms left to decorate, and that's really exciting, really exciting. We've already set about planning the gym, which will kick off, I think, fairly soon, and then it's all steam ahead come April to get working on the, the, the biggest room, the games room. But I did waste some money in some aspects, but I did also resell a lot of the furniture pieces that I maybe made mistakes on. And a lot of you were so grateful for the fact that I was able to sell these items because you were then able to buy items that maybe you missed out on or even get something that's better value as well. Cause it's not like any of the stuff went into, like it was thrown away. That's not how this, this works. I've been selling furniture and it feels good. It feels good. I get to chat to a lot of you and it's, it's so great when I see items that didn't work in my home, working in your home, which is great. So that was the, the sort of, you know, one of the things that I would say that I was my worst purchases, but it was, I kind of lumped everything together just so I don't have to go through everything that I wasted money on basically. <laughs> And then finally, my one of my best purchases and ongoing purchases is to Audible. And Audible is just something that at the moment, it's, it's kind of Audible and iBooks joined together. I don't know if you, can you get Audible purchases in iBooks? 
that's a real thing that Apple needs to work with Audible on because I would love to have all my books in one place. What I'm doing at the moment is actually listening to a lot of the self-improvement books that I enjoy listening to. And I am putting a blog post together of my favourites really, really soon. But I also then listen to, I listen to those ones and then I read a book alongside. I'm currently reading Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. I'm struggling to get into it at the moment, but I'm trying to give it a bit more time. I think I'm on the fifth chapter, I think. Yeah. Whereas I power through my audiobooks, I've already finished one and it's the 7th or, yeah, 7th? Yeah, it's the 7th of January today. So um, it's definitely meaning that I'm getting through a lot more of my books. I love the feel of a real book and I wish that I was organised enough to always have a real book in my bag. I change my bag so much that I don't and it's so much easier for me to either have my books on my iPad or on my phone and it means that I power through so many more books than I was previously and that to me is more important than the tangible book in front of me. It's also a lot more sustainable so you know. For me it was really important to get through a lot more books this year and I find listening to books and reading books wonderful. I take so much from it and it gets me so excited and so Audible and iBooks, all of the books I've purchased last year and into this year have been my my best purchases so I really wanted to put that in this video. I don't work with Audible, I was approached to work with Audible but the way that they, they structure their collaborations just didn't work for me so as much as I love them and I've never worked with them, I wish I could work with them, it just didn't work out so for me this is just I'm never going to withhold a, a brand or a product that I love just because we couldn't work together on something. I love what they do. I love the, the fact that I'm able to listen to books. I get far more into them than podcasts and it's just brilliant. I personally love more when it's the actual author reading the book because there's just a sort of love and investment into that book when they're reading it that you don't get when someone else reads it. So yeah, anyway, a little bit of a ramble there. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you have taken something from my best and worst purchases. Let me know which one you liked or didn't like. And if you can think of anything, because I really struggled to think of things that I didn't, like that I maybe didn't like in 2020 that I spent my money on. If you can remember anything, because you guys are so good at this, let me know in the comments below. And what did you buy that maybe you wish you didn't in 2019? I would love to know. Other than that, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching and yeah.